What is going on, Headliner Nation? Hopefully everyone is doing well out there today. We're talking about our top 20 quarterbacks for Week 7 Fantasy Football. Now, before we dive into the rankings here for this week, I need to go through some of my bigger hits and misses from last week first. Now, first off, a few of the hits, Justin Fields, Jordan Love, two guys we continue to rank pretty high. They continue to go out every single week and put up fantasy numbers. Probably not going to happen this week for Justin Fields since they're giving Russell Wilson an opportunity to play football. That's for a different time, different place, but nonetheless, he had himself a good week six. And then C.J. Stroud, we knocked him down the rankings a few spots last week. We knew without Nico Collins, the ceiling wasn't going to be as high, but we didn't want to avoid him altogether. He basically finished where we had him ranked. As for a few of the misses, Dak Prescott. Dude absolutely blew last week. I had him ranked way too high. And then I really missed on two rookies. Bo Nix and Drake May had themselves a great week six. And really based off of what we saw last week, we're probably going to talk about both those names in this show here today. But let's go ahead and bring up the rankings. Let's bring up tier one for the quarterback position. And we do that, we see the likes of Jaden Daniels, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Baker Mayfield, Jordan Love, Josh Allen, and Brock Doom Dirty Purdy. Now for Jaden Daniels, he's got a matchup this week going up against Carol. Carolina. He's currently the quarterback three overall in fantasy football, has had at least 20 fantasy points in all but one game this season, has 10 total touchdowns through six weeks, and more than 20 yards rushing in every single game. He leads the number two overall offense in the NFL, and now a matchup going up against Carolina, who allows over 18 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. I got Jaden Daniels number one in week seven. Number two, it's Lamar Jackson going up against Tampa Bay, the current quarterback one overall in fantasy football. He He's averaging 24 fantasy points per game, has had at least 40 yards rushing in every game this season, now has back-to-back 300-yard -back passing games, and a matchup this week going up against Tampa Bay, who allows the second most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, so I got Lamar at number two. Number three, it's Jalen Hurts going up against the Giants, and man is it good to have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith back in the lineup for Philadelphia. That is a huge boost to Jalen Hurts. Now his rushing numbers, they're slightly down this year due to say Quan Barkley going out there and dominating, but now in a matchup going up against the Giants, they allow 17.5 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. Now here in recent history, Jalen Hurts has done pretty well against the Giants. I got him at number three. Number four, it's the Bake Show. Baker Mayfield going up against Baltimore. A true MVP candidate right now, whether you like him or you don't. He's leading the league in passing touchdowns. He's the overall quarterback two in fantasy football. He's averaging 23.4 fantasy points per game and has at least two touchdowns in five of the six games he's played this season. Plus, on top of that, Tampa Bay has now scored 30 plus points in four of its six games and a matchup going up against against Baltimore, who allows the third most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. I got Baker Mayfield at number four. Now, after Baker, we got Jordan Love in a matchup going up against Houston this week. Now, obviously, Jordan Love has missed some time, so overall, he's going to be a little bit lower on total points scored by quarterbacks. But when you break it down on a per-game basis, he is averaging the third highest fantasy points per game at the position. He has 12 touchdowns in four games, tons of pass-catching options in this offense. Now, a matchup going up against Houston, who allows over 18 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks, and we know that they're easier to throw on than run on. Plus, if Houston can continue to put points on the board, Jordan Love's going to continue throwing for all four quarters. Now, after Jordan Love, we got Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills in a matchup going up against Tennessee, and someone has himself a shiny new toy in Amari Cooper. As of right now, though, Josh Allen is the current quarterback six overall in fantasy football, has scored 24-plus fantasy points in three of his six games this season, but he is in desperate need of a top wide receiver. Now, this is a tough matchup. Tennessee allows the seventh-fewest fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. But with James Cook still not 100% healthy, don't be surprised if Josh Allen tries to utilize Amari Cooper right out of the gate. So we'll then round out Tier 1 with Brock Purdy going up against Kansas City, a Super Bowl rematch. Now we know that San Francisco is full of healthy pass-catching weapons, and they have multiple injured running backs. Plus, this Kansas City defense is the best run D in the league. Now you better believe that Brock Purdy's looking for a little bit of payback, especially being that they're playing at home in San Francisco. I expect Brock Purdy to have to throw the ball a lot this week, and that's why I put him up inside Tier 1 at quarterback 7. Now, real quick, before we dive into tier two, let me shout out today's sponsor, Turtle Beach. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but the holiday season is right around the corner. 
we need to start buying Christmas presents for people. But I do know there is one thing that you have noticed, and that's that everything is super crazy expensive right now. And that right there is why you need to take advantage of this deal through Turtle Beach. Sure, they have every gaming accessory you could need. High quality, lower prices, exactly what everyone's looking for. It's not just headsets though, it's controllers, it's keyboards, it's mice, whatever it may be, Turtle Beach has you covered. Just be sure to use our discount. We want you to get 10% off your order at turtlebeach.com when you use the promo code headliners. So go out there and do a little bit of early holiday shopping. Reduce the stress in your life. Don't wait until the last minute. Head over to turtlebeach.com right now. Find something you like for yourself or somebody else. Throw it in your cart. Use that promo code headliners at checkout and get yourself 10% off. But all right, let's dive into tier two now of the quarterback position. And here in Tier 2 is where we have Joe Burrow, C.J. Stroud, Sam Darnold, Jared Goff, Patrick Mahomes, and Geno Smith. Starting off with Joe Burr. Joe Burrow in a matchup going up against Cleveland. He's the current quarterback four overall in fantasy football. He's one of only five quarterbacks right now averaging over 20 fantasy points per game. But he just had his first game without a passing touchdown since week one. However... He was saved by a 47-yard rushing touchdown. Listen, I'm in the business of fantasy points. How he gets them, I don't care. But now he has a matchup going up against Cleveland, who allows 15.3 fantasy points per game, the 10th fewest in the league. Now, even though the matchup isn't great, the weapons he has on offense is more than enough for him to have a good fantasy day once again, so I got him at number 8. Now, after him, it's C.J. Stroud in a matchup going up against Green Bay. No Nico, no problem. He still went out and scored 19 fantasy points in Week 6. Really, though? It all comes down to touchdowns because the passing volume is going to be there. Now, he still has Tank Dell and Stephon Diggs, and boy, did Joe Mixon look good in the backfield. When Joe Mixon is running that well, it's going to open up the passing game every single week for C.J. Stroud. Now a matchup going up against Green Bay. They allow 15.6 fantasy points per game. I got C.J. Stroud at number nine. Number 10, it's Sam Darnold going up against Detroit. He's coming off the bye. He's had at least 21 fantasy points in three of his last four games played and multiple touchdowns in all but one game this season. We also know that the running game is banged up in Minnesota. Aaron Jones could be missing some time. But on top of that, we know Detroit is super hard to run the ball against. It's a lot easier to throw on Detroit than it is to run on Detroit. With them allowing over 16 fantasy points per game and not having Aiden Hutchinson on the defensive line, I got Sam Darnold at number 10. Number 11, it's his opponent in that game, Jared Goff going up against Minnesota, and Goff has had exactly, and I mean exactly 18 pass completions in four of his five games this year which is super weird if you think about it. Now, Detroit has gone out and scored 40-plus points now in back-to-back -back games. Tim Patrick is emerging as a deep threat down the field. Jared Goff himself has gone over 25 fantasy points in two straight ball games, and Minnesota allows the league average when it comes to fantasy points per game against opposing quarterbacks. I got Jared Goff once again as a low-end quarterback one at number 11. Which brings us down to number 12. It's Patrick Mahomes going up against San Francisco. He's coming off the bye week, and a lot of people are really tired of his 15 fantasy points per game especially when they see guys like Aaron Rodgers getting Devontae Adams and Josh Allen getting Amari Cooper and Mahomes has Juju but we also expect a whole lot more from Travis Kelsey here in the near future in a matchup going up against San Francisco who allows 16.2 fantasy points per game I got Mahomes as a low-end QB1 at number 12 number 13 is Geno Smith going up against Atlanta he's quietly the number 10 quarterback overall on the season averaging 18.3 fantasy points per game but what I really love is the volume 40 plus pass attempts in four of the last five games played and now we have DK Metcalf out there complaining about needing more deep shots down the field. And honestly, I agree with him because Seattle has had multiple big deep plays down the field called back due to penalties. They're finding the success down the field. Eventually, they'll be able to get it without the penalty, and that's when we really start racking up fantasy points in a matchup this week going up against Atlanta. They allow 17 fantasy points per game, and I got Geno at number 13, which will round out Tier 2. So let's go ahead and bring up Tier 3 now. It's Kirk Cousins, Drake May, Aaron Rodgers, Kyler Murray, Andy Dalton, Matthew Stafford, and Bo Nix. Now, when it comes to Kirk Cousins, he's got a matchup going up against Seattle, and he went from 500 yards and four touchdowns against Tampa Bay two weeks ago to 225 yards and one touchdown last week against Carolina, his production has really been up and down all year long. In a matchup this week going up against Seattle, they allow 17 fantasy points per game. It's really hard to trust the upside of Kirk Cousins. He's not somebody we can lock into the top 12 each and every week. 
I really look at him as a solid QB2 in those super flex two quarterback leagues. That's where we're really looking for Kirk Cousins weekly. Which then brings us to the rookie quarterback Drake May of the New England Patriots in a matchup going up against Jacksonville in London. Now, I was already worried with a rookie quarterback traveling to an international game, but this matchup is that good. But then all of a sudden, news is starting to come out that he's getting an MRI done on his knee. So if you're planning on using Drake May this week, be sure to have a backup plan just in case. I expect we'll have more information soon, but definitely pay attention to it because this is a great matchup. Like I said, Jacksonville allows 24 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. That's most in the NFL. And last week, we saw Drake May go out there and get 243 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions, along with 38 rushing yards in his first start against Houston. This matchup is so much better, but as of now, there's trending to be a lot of risk as well. Now, after him, we got Aaron Rodgers in a matchup going up against Pittsburgh, and he just had one of his best fantasy games of the year but now he's added Devontae Adams to the mix, and you better believe that is a huge boost. Sure, going up against Pittsburgh, not ideal. They allow the fifth-fewest fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, but now he's got Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams, and that is an elite combo. I'm just glad that that nagging hamstring injury that Adams has been dealing with for a couple weeks in Las Vegas has magically healed itself because he's going to be on the field this week. Now, when you're looking at the rest of the season and better matchups, Aaron Rodgers could have top 12 upside rest of season. After him, we got Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. And right now, Kyler's kind of on this weird every other week schedule where he's out there producing fantasy points. Now we know that Marvin Harrison Jr. is in the concussion protocol. Trey McBride is a little bit banged up along with James Conner. And now they get a matchup going up against the Chargers who allow the six fewest fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks when it comes to Kyler Murray. It's kind of big risky this week. After him, we got Andy Dalton going up against Washington. Another two touchdown game last week for Andy Dalton in week six. He now has two plus touchdowns in three of his last four games played, but we have to think that Carolina throws the ball a lot against Washington. They allow the ninth most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, and if Washington can get an early lead, that means Andy Dalton is throwing the ball a butt ton this week. After him, though, we got Matthew Stafford of the Los Angeles Rams going up against Las Vegas. He's coming off the bye, and does he get Cooper Cup back? We know that Stafford needs the help. He has no game all year with multiple touchdown passes and no 300-yard game since week one. This really feels like a replay of 2023. Do you remember this offense in LA was really slow to start the season because they couldn't get everyone healthy, and then after week 10, they just exploded? Is that what we're looking at again this year for the Rams? That remains to be seen, but I do know the matchup this week is a good one going up against Las Vegas. They allow the eighth most fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, so Matthew Stafford made the top 20. And then lastly, it's Bo Nix of the Denver Broncos going up against New Orleans. Now, after three weeks with no passing touchdowns to start the year, Bo has turned it on over the last three weeks. Six touchdowns in his last three games, back-to-back -back games with 21-plus fantasy points. Now, all of a sudden, he's the overall quarterback 13, and we just saw the Bake Show Baker Mayfield hang 50 points on New Orleans last week. With all the injuries the Saints are dealing with, I got Bo Nix up inside the top 20 at number 20 which will take us through our top 20 overall quarterbacks for week seven fantasy football. Now, when it comes to this position, there's a lot of depth, right? There's a lot of options at the quarterback position each week. Now, maybe you see things a little bit differently than me. That's okay. Our rankings aren't supposed to match. Maybe you see something that I don't. So leave those comments down below in the comment section. I love to talk to the community as much as I possibly can on every one of my videos. But I'm going to go ahead and get out for the day. So hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day. And then most importantly, do your part to make the world a better place. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game.